In this video, I'll show you some modification options that you can do on your Nissan XL T30 or T31 that will make it more capable off-road. But before we begin, I'd like to thank the very supportive members of the Nissan XL Off-Road Down Under Facebook group. You guys are amazing, thanks for the positive feedback, and thanks for allowing me to use some of your photos in the making of this video. I would like to make it clear that I am not sponsored or do not have any affiliations with any of the brands and companies mentioned in this video. Let's start by explaining wheel offsets, and here's a simple chart explaining that. In a nutshell, the more negative offset a wheel has, the further away it sticks out of your fenders, and the positive offset is just the opposite of that. You have to remember that the more negative offset you have, the more stress it gives on other components, particularly your wheel bearings. Also, the bigger your tire size, the heavier the unsprung weight of your vehicle will be, and obviously the more stress it will be for your steering, suspension, driveline, and brakes. The most common tire size upgrade is a 225-70-16, which is also the same as a 225-75-15. This is a total diameter of around 28.4 inches compared to 27 inches on the factory tire. Some people, including myself, decided to max it out and install 235-70-16s. This tire has a total diameter of 29 inches. I made a video of this and will put in the link in the description if you want to check it out. This is one of the many useful websites out there, and this URL takes you straight to the Nissan X-Trail page. On this page, you will see all the different series Nissan X-Trails. And for example, if you click on the 2007, which is what I have, in this page, you'll see the original specifications of the wheels and the tires, including the PCD. One of the tabs will take you to a tire calculator, which is very important if you are deciding to change the tire size, the wheel or the tire size of your vehicle. So in here, you'll have two sections. The left one, which is going to be the tire that you're currently running, and the wheel as well. And the one on the right is the new wheel and tire size you plan to install. So you basically fill up all the fields and it, it will automatically calculate the differences between the current tire and the new tire that you plan to install. So if you scroll further down, you'll see the exact measurements of both wheel and tire. You even have typical weight, so you can compare the weight as well. Obviously an estimated weight of each wheel and tire. It will give you a lot of detailed information, but basically the two most important things that you want to be looking at would be the width of the tire and the height as well. If you are running original rims on your vehicle, you can upgrade to the 225-70-16 tire size without needing to change anything. You may get a little bit of rubbing at full steering lock, but it's nothing to worry about. However, if you are planning to put in 235-70-16, you will get some rubbing. And you would need a rim with a minimum negative offset of at least 35 mils to clear it. Before changing your wheel and tire, please check with your local tire shop to see what laws and restrictions apply in your area. There are a few options for suspension lifts ranging from 25 to 50 mils or 2 inches. There are different brand lift springs and uh, struts available, and some of the springs have load ratings. Now what that means is that uh, the higher the load rating, the more weight you can carry until the spring starts sagging. But airbags are a better option to keep the vehicle level when loaded if you want to go that way. It's worth noting that you can use the original struts with any of the lift springs. However, it is recommended that you buy the camber correction kit to compensate for the extra height. It's also worth noting that when you change your struts, make sure you do change your strut tops. I do have a video showing what springs and struts I installed on my Nissan x -Trail, so I'll put a link in the description below for your reference. Now the other uh, lift option that gives you a maximum height of 50 mils or 2 inches are called strut spaces. Now there's a company in Queensland, Australia called Superior Engineering and they do manufacture these things. But please note that uh, you cannot, I repeat, you cannot use strut spaces and pair it with lift springs because the maximum height that you can put on your Nissan X-Trail will be 50 mils. And this is due to the um, CV 
angles on the front axle as well as the overall geometry of the vehicle. Now if 50 mils is too high for you, I've recently seen an ad in eBay Australia for a 30 mil strut spacer, so I'll leave it with you to investigate further if you're interested. Most of us know that the transaxle and compressor is quite low on these vehicles, so protecting them would be a must if you plan to take it off-road. The only off-the-shelf company that I know of that makes bash plates for the X-Trail is a South African company called Asphere. They do have the front bash plate for the T30 and they do have the front and the petrol tank bash plate for the T31. But as far as I know, these are not available in Australia anymore. So the only option that you have would be to get one custom made, which I believe a few people have done. There are a few things you can do to prepare your Nissan X-Trail for a water crossing and they don't cost a lot of money either. The first thing is to extend the differential and transaxle breathers. Again, I have a video about this that I will link in the description below. The second thing you can do is locate the relay that controls the thermal fans of your radiator. And what you can do is you can temporarily remove this relay before you do your water crossing. Not only does this prevent the fan from breaking, but it prevents the fan from spraying water everywhere in your engine bay. But whatever you do, please don't forget to put the relay back, otherwise you'll um, overheat your engine. Enox or WD-40 is a must-have. Spray it all over your electricals before every water crossing. I've crossed several streams and done the Condamine River track which crosses the Condamine River 14 times. This is back when my X-Trail was stock standard with highway tires. And at one crossing I remember that the water was deep enough to go above the door seals. Never had issues with it and all I did was follow whatever I mentioned just before. And the last one is a snorkel. But there is no off the shelf snorkel available for a Nissan X-Trail. However, People have successfully used a snorkel from a Navara D22 and even a D40. In other countries they call this the Nissan Frontier. There are different styles and shapes of these snorkels, so each one of them will have a different fit to your Nissan x -Trail. There are many roof storage options for your Nissan x -Trail. They range from your roof racks, your roof baskets, your roof trays or flat trays, but whatever you do, you've got to consider the aerodynamics of it. Anything that you put on your roof will cause wind drag and it will affect your fuel consumption. By design, you cannot put a full length roof rack unless you customize one for yourself, which is doable and some people have done it. You have quite a few options for your front bar work for your X-Trail. But whatever you do, make sure that the bar work that you install is airbag compatible and ADR approved if you are in Australia. These range from your factory nudge bars, aftermarket ones, to your full on front bar work which gives you a lot of protection, especially if you're driving in the area in Australia where there are a lot of kangaroos. You can also custom fit a rear tie carrier which someone has actually done here in Australia. It can be customized to carry jerry cans for extra fuel or water. If you plan to install a light bar on your factory nudge bar, 22 inches would be the way to go. Installing the light bar on the roof is an option as well. Just remember when you, when you do that to install the light as further back as you can so you won't get the glare from the bonnet. If you plan to go to remote places, then installing a UHF radio, especially here in Australia, is a must. The most common place that people um, install the area would be the bull bow, the front um, bow work. However, there are also people who install it on the front fender. T30 rear muffler. If you own one, you'll know that the rear muffler hangs quite low. So replacing it, or better yet, uh, take the opportunity and do a catback exhaust system is a way better option, that way you get a bit of performance as well. If you plan to take your Nissan X-Trail to remote long distance travel then range would be the issue for you. Now if you own a Nissan X-Trail T30 in Australia then you may be in luck because there's a company called Long Range Automotive that sell a 50 litre auxiliary fuel tank. Just take note though that it's not, it, it is not compatible with the Heyman Rees tow bar R1895 and you will have to change your rear muffler as shown in the photo because that's where it fits. 
And if you do live overseas and you can't you can't find an auxiliary tank off the shelf, then I'm sure you there's a way to custom make one. And now last but not the least, some of you may have seen photos online of Nissan X shells with a winch installed. And actually there is a company in Europe that do sell a winch mounting kit for Nissan X Trail D30. Now Long story short is that yes, obviously it is possible to fit a winch, but no, you do not want to fit a winch because the winch that these guys fit are really low rated winches. And the reason being is that uh, the X-Rail doesn't have a, a full frame chassis. It doesn't have the mounting, the proper um, frame and support and the uh, structure to be able to to handle such uh, force when recovering the vehicle. So what they these guys do is they put a, a really low rated winch so that uh, basically the winch gives up first before it starts tearing apart your bending your the front end of your vehicle. Even if you can find a person or a company that will um, reinforce the front, the whole front end of your X-Trail and let's say they are successful in doing that, put it this way, in real life by the time you spend that amount of money, you will just not do it on a Nissan x -Trail. You would rather sell your Nissan x -Trail and buy a Land Cruiser or a Land Rover or a Patrol or whatever four wheel drive. You just won't do it on a Nissan x -Trail. So the best way to recover your Nissan x -Trail is to self-recover like traction boards, hand winches, and better yet, you can use the rear tow bar if you've got one as a mounting point for your winch because you can buy a winch cradle that attaches to your tow bar and that way you can install like a um, five six thousand pound winch and there'll be enough to pull your Nissan next trail out. I've got a couple of videos I created in the past about uh, recovery, vehicle recovery. I'll put a link in the description again for your reference if you want to check that out. Thanks for watching guys, I appreciate you watching till the end of the video and I hope you've picked up good information from this. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, give us a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.